Hey guys, Zogi Sanji and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And I want to quickly cover the developer live stream that we did just have earlier on today. This will be for July 2023. Diablo 4 covering season 1 and just a bunch of other stuff coming in the next few weeks. But without further ado, let's just hop straight into it. I have made a full little summary of all of the stuff that will be coming. Some questions and answers at the end. And then as well, some other stuff for the season. So season one will be season of the malignant starting on the 20th of June, 2023 or July. And what is it? Ju July. Yes, that one. All right. And corn mod is the name of the dude in the trailer. He's the guy, this guy over there. There's a trailer to go with it as well as, as well as all this information of, yeah, we'll cover this in another video. I will have it linked in the description of this one for you guys and then obviously in the other video. So right now we'll just carry on with our little summary. Season storyline starts in Kyovashad. It is not a continuation on the D4 main story. It is a new story on the side kind of. It's like its own little side story of what's happening in, uh, what do you call it, Sanctuary right now. So it's not really a continuation of Inarius and Lilith's story. They have stated that. So just something there if you are really into the lore and the story. It will not continue on with Inarius and Lilith. This is something else on the side. Following this dude over here. Cornmind and him needing help. And we'll see how that all goes. Alright, so how it's going to work. Anytime an elite spawns, it could be a malignant elite. And you can kill that. And then it spawns a more powerful malignant elite. So it will be a malignant elite to start with, right? Then you kill it. It's going to spawn a more powerful elite that is also obviously malignant. And some other mobs and stuff. It's going to like buff all the mobs around it. And then if you manage to kill that, it drops the cage heart item. And then you can kind of like cage that. And then you get these gems that you can use in your gear. And they're pretty much like legendary gems from D3. But I believe a lot more powerful. They only really showed us the one example. Which I will have up on screen for you guys right now. It's like a crit gem. And then how that's going to work. There's going to be three different colors of these gems. And they can only go into jewelries. So you can only have three different ones of them equipped at any time. Obviously because you only have two rings and an amulet and then there will be a fourth really rare gem that can fit into any of the sockets i believe it was like that or it will be like the socket can fit any of the gems something like that where there's three that have to match so it'll be like a red yellow and a blue socket and then the gems have to match those sockets and then there'll be this fourth really really rare one that can then fit into any of them and then let's move on to some more of the other stuff so there is 32 new malignant powers like the legendary aspects the whole Thing. there's oh there's 32 of them so over 30 new powers 32 to be exact can only be placed in jewelry so it means three at a time there are different colors it's all the stuff which is covered now a fourth really rare one named refult i couldn't quite hear what he said in the uh live stream that's what i could make out him saying refult or revolt or something something to that extent but anyway that can fit into any soccer color jewelers can add sockets but they are random what color they will be so you know like right now when you go to the jeweler and you add a socket to your jewelry gives you the socket there and we usually just put skulls in it because armor is really strong so you can add a socket but it's going to give you a random color socket so you can't really get a specific socket you want anyway item powers of the hearts increase as world tiers and nightmare dungeon tiers increase so as you level up well more more so to say like to you you know right now like 820 850 is like the the maximum item level C. So I'm quite interested to see how high these things will actually go. If they'll maybe even surpass like 850 item level. But yeah, the item levels will go up according to the content you're doing. So you won't like find the 800 item level one at like level 30 or whatever it may be. So if you are still going through the campaign or you leveling up your character early on, you can find lower ones. There'll be a much lower power level. So that's being a lot weaker than one you could find later. In saying so, you can dismantle the older hearts for materials to craft new items called invokers. And then invokers can be used after beating the campaign at specific locations called malignant tunnels. Those are like areas with high concentration of malignant enemies to then farm for hearts and materials. And at the end of the, the whatever you want to call it, at the end of that, the invoker can be used on a malignant algrove to spawn the corresponding color heart to target farm more easily. But basically you come to the, the heart like I'm showing you guys in the video right now. And then you can choose which one of these colors you want the Elgrove to spawn an elite of the corresponding color. So you can have a chance at getting 
the corresponding malignant heart thing or whatever it is the power so that makes it a little bit easier to then target farm stuff that you are trying to go obviously it's not a guarantee that you'll get it but if a heart does drop it's going to be of that color so it's a lot easier then to target farm specific ones that you may be missing for your build once we actually know what the 32 different ones are i will be make sure to cover all of that on the channel moving forward so make sure to subscribe and like this video so you guys can also get in there with the augie saintness but let's move on season journey feature like the battle pass levels and chapters don't have to don't have to do all of the objectives to do to move on to the next chapter just meet a threshold so what that means is so like for chapter one you need to do seven out of the nine objectives so if there's one or two of the objectives that you don't like at all like for example in the live stream uh, the one guy pointed out that he doesn't like doing sailors and there is one chapter point there to do a sailor so if you don't like it then you know obviously you don't have to complete every single point to move on you only have to do seven out of the nine actually move on to the next chapter so you could then just skip out on the seller or whatever it is you may not not like doing so really cool that they added that and the full season journey and battle pass are available for free to everyone only special cosmetics lock behind the premium battle pass so just something to keep in mind as well as the deluxe and the premium versions of diablo if you have bought them and pre-ordered them like way before then you already have the premium battle pass unlocked i believe it is just for this season so we'll have to see how that goes moving forward so we already have the premium battle pass if you have deluxe or premium versions of diablo 4 and then where was it over there smoldering ashes can also be obtained through the battle pass season journey can be used at a certain level to apply season blessings so you'll get these ashes throughout the journey and the battle pass so I believe the first one was at the battle pass level 8 but your character then has to actually be level 40 to even use it and you can put it into this seasonal blessing thing as for an example you get increased xp of killing monsters on the first level and then later on much down the line you can get one that increases the duration of elixirs and we know we all use elixirs just really for the xp buff to make up the living process a lot easier there is that little thing there to keep in mind smoldering ashes and then the renown that will carry over is locations fog of war and lilith statues that will all carry over into the new season so what you could do now is just go unlock the whole map on your current playthrough and then collect all your statues of lilith as well as the renown attached to those will all get carried over as well so you'll get that like sweet little boost at the beginning of the season so that you can actually get the first two ranks of the renown completely done just by doing these all now before the season actually comes out so discovering your whole map getting all the fog of war un uncovered and then your statues of lilith will give you obviously the five extra potions to start out with and the five extra skill points to start out with at level one because you will have both levels of like level one and level two in each zone on the renown so something there to keep in mind as well as to log on to your main with the most renown done so that it can pass over what i mean by that is on the 18th I'll actually have the big update and then on that day you want to log into your character with the most progress across your account so like your main or whichever character it is you collected all the statues of lilith on and you like discover the map on log into that as then it's going to retroactively update that to your whole account so your whole account will get it as well as if you haven't actually completed all of them on one character make sure to log into all your characters so that it could just compile all of that info into your whole account so just keep that in mind but they will be reminding us a lot more of that closer to the date they said it in the uh, live stream and then just some other stuff new boss monsters will be added new legendary aspects will be added and new, new, new unique items will be added and this will also show up in non-seasons on the 18th of july so the new uniques and legendary aspects i'm not sure about the boss fights but the legendaries and the new uniques will both show up in the normal version in the eternal realm on the 18th and then obviously on the 20th is when we can actually go ahead and create the new season character and then get into the season journey and all that stuff but the update um containing all of the stuff obviously not the malignant um, mechanics will go live on the 18th so we can go try out and see if we can find any of these new uniques and legendaries two days before the season comes out so we can have a look at them and then just a quick q a respecting character should be more easier in the future regarding the paragon board making it easier to change as right now you've got to go and take out each little paragon point it takes a long time they will be adding a scroll of amnesia in season one allowing you to reset your character completely for free 
Well, it's like a one-time scroll and it will carry over to non-seasons. I believe you could even find more of these. Like that's an item you might be able to find or maybe craft because he does say that you can only use it like it's a one-time use. But it does, they do say as well that it does carry over. So maybe you can find multiples of them, but obviously it's like a one charge every time you use it or like as a once-off use, you use the scroll and then it's, it's gone but then you can find the scroll again later on. So that will just reset your complete Paragon board, your whole skill tree and everything. So you can just respec and redo your character all over. Obviously it will not reset your level because that's pretty stupid, but yeah, it will reset your skill tree and your Paragon tree and whatever else is connected to all of that. So you can just like rebuild your character, so to say, and not spend all the gold and the time changing all of that out to then just respec it anyway. And the current season mechanics coming to season one will not be a part of the game forever just in the season of the malignant so how the hearts work the little gem system will only be in season one but in the future they're going to keep open that some mechanics can get added in the further seasons maybe added to the game permanently depending on like what they are and if it actually changes the game for the better they might implement stuff in permanently into the game so for example in my brain like the cube the canize cube in diablo 3 something like that if that gets added and it's like really good to the game but doesn't start making the game op because could you imagine if there's a new crazy powerful thing every season and that stays in the game forever by the time we get to like season 10 i'm gonna have so many different mechanics making your character so ridiculously strong i'm gonna have to have like up to nightmare 100 nightmare dungeon 300 for us to even you know have any sort of challenge so just keep that all in mind moving forward they have some good plans for the stash base coming soon and seasons will be lasting at least 12 weeks. So they're going to aim for three to four months, but they'll never go under three months. They might last a little bit longer, but they said they will at last at least 12 weeks. So nothing shorter, but maybe longer. So they could push them a little bit further or so on, but you have at least 12 weeks to play each season. So that is it for all of the live stream covered stuff in the season journey and everything. And in our next video, we're going to be covering the whole thing of yeah. We're going to go through it as well but you guys can just go check it out in the description of this video but thank you guys so much for dropping in if you liked the video please drop a like and a sub to the channel it helps me out so much and i'll catch you beautiful people in the next one hoggy say now run free and dive into the sky hear the wind crying